absolutely adore a costume so much. And Joe Rotella has brought some amazing cosplay pieces that, are, Joe, they're essentially made from foam, right? Correct, that's EVA foam ethylene vinyl acetate copolymer. Now that's a mouthful. And people use this for cosplay because it comes in different thicknesses from two millimeters to six millimeters, even dowel shaped, but it's a thermoplastic. So if you bend it and heat it, you can shape it. And when it's cool, it'll keep the shape, which is how we so do So that's this. essentially how you get the sort of rounded look out of what looks like something yep. flat. And you can layer it and then sand it. But the key is it's very durable and flexible. So we used it for cosplay. Are you a cosplayer? Well, I mean, I'm casual cosplay because I'm oh. just wearing a little headband here. So we're going to use it, though, to make a book cover. And this is important because it's going in and out of a knapsack, right? So it's got to be durable. And when we undo it, of course, this spine has to be flexible so the paint doesn't crack or pop off. That looks like a magical book, like a wizard's book or something like that. It is, it is. So let's get started. I have a book that I picked up at a trade show, a conference, and I like it, but you know, it's not really gonna fit my cosplay. So I wanna make dragon scales. So I started with some gray EVA foam. I like gray because I can draw on it and see the lines. Oh, so it comes in different colors. It does, you know, okay. and if you're gonna use black, use like a metallic Sharpie will show up. It cuts great with a craft knife or with scissors, and I have to tell you, with an electronic cutting machine, it cuts like butter, like really? butter, baby. Yep. Hmm. So all I did was cut some scales. You could make rounded scales. You can, you know, I don't know the last time you saw a dragon. The dragon I saw <laughs> had pointy scales. Well, I have to say, I, uh, I see miniature dragons. They look like lizards, and you know, they're a little hard to see what the uh, situation is on scales. You want to take a guess why I like the pointy scales? Because they're easy to cut. And? Uh, they're decorative? I don't waste any material oh. because I get two strips of scales out of one sheet. You're smarty. And I'm cheap. <laughs> so I've got some already cut, and now the key is how to paint it. Okay. So I've already stirred this up, and I'm just gonna put some out on a palette. So I see you're painting it black. You could have also just started with black foam, couldn't you? You could, again, that's harder for me to see. Okay. And then I like the gray because I can base coat at anything. Some of the metallic colors are a little translucent. So I like having the black underneath. And I don't know how to describe this other than it's silky. It's absolutely silky. This is a high density closed cell foam and it's it I don't want to so say slippery. It looks so much like craft foam, and I have tried to paint craft foam somewhat unsuccessfully, um, but I sort of get what you mean. It has that very nice, soft finish. Oh, and, and this the paint itself is so silky, it just it kind of just glides. Does that make sense? It does. And it takes about an hour for this to dry, so you can base coat as many scales as you want. I have some done, so I'm going to just put these aside and pull out some that I already have done. Do you paint both sides or in the edges and everything or just the top? Before I learned or after. <laughs> okay. Because the first time I made a book, all the scales underneath are covered except the last row. When I opened the book, I could see the back. So uh -huh. you do want to paint the back of the very first row. Okay. Now for colors, you know, what dragon colors do you want? Well, you're holding hot, what looks like hot pink to me, and if you can't tell from what I'm wearing, I'm all about hot pink. So I'm gonna just pour out some colors. These are neon colors. So they're really, really, really gonna pop. Um, I have some satin colors I picked as well, and some glitter colors as well. Glitter is the magic word, always. <laughs> Now, I like to put the glitter on top usually um, because I don't want to cover up any of the sparkle. And this is actually a gold glitter, so the medium that it's in makes it look, you know, like it's not gold. Right, but when it dries. When it dries I mean, essentially what people always need to know about paint is that it's usually pigment, binder, and water. And so if your pigment is instead glitter or if there's addition of glitter or mica powder, essentially when it dries, the binder and the water go either invisible or the water goes away completely. And so what you're left with looks quite different than what you started with because of that. So I want to give you some examples. If I were doing, say, armor, you might just want the whole thing to look 
like silver. Yes, that would be super cool. But my dragons have a more of a modeled effect. So I'm using a very special texture tool. It's this great vacuum filter foam. Very cool idea. And I always love repurposing things into something new and different. You know, and if you don't want to get it on your fingers, I hot glue it to old blocks of wood. Oh, clever. You could also wear gloves or you could also just, you know, I, I'm actually like getting in there with my fingers. I feel like I have a better sense of what's happening, which would explain why I'm usually covered in paint. So there is the whole process over and over again, whatever colors are right for your dragon. And you just keep layering and layering and layering. Cool. But the cool thing is when this is dry, I've got some here that I started in green, totally, totally flexible, durable, no cracking, no popping. Almost looks like a crown for just a moment when you're Why holding it like that, that, right? I'm, re I'm ready for my crown. Mm -hmm. So let me make some room here and let's build our book. Okay, so now you could obviously pick any colors, any shape you want, and this idea of how you work with it would be the same depending on whatever project it is you want to make. If I wanted to make a crown or wings or whatever, it's just you use your own shapes and your own ideas. You got it. Now, do you remember, did you used to make book covers like in elementary 100 school? 100% out of paper bags, and I've actually made them recently too for some of my art journals that have cloth covers that I don't want to get dirty while I'm working on uh, them. Good idea. I started with a thin sheet of poster board okay. because it held up better to the hot glue when I went and glued the scales on. And you just cut a rectangle that's the same height as your book, but allow two or three inches extra on each side. So with that done, then we're gonna go ahead and take it and score it to match the center fold and the folds on the end. Okay, That's I it. can do that. That's easy peasy, right? Right. Once we have our book started, now it becomes just hot gluing row upon row of your scales. And I've got one started here because this will take a little bit of time. So now the hot glue doesn't make it like bend because I know you said that it's heat moldable. No, it'll, it, it really adheres though, okay. really, really well. So you wanna start, it's like shingles. You wanna start at the bottom mm -hmm. and keep layering and layering and layering. And all we do is apply a little strip. Now, in terms of the length, I went ahead and drew a white line right where the edge of the book was. I don't wanna go beyond that little edge. So that line mm -hmm. is where my book would fold. And once I get the glue on, you just, off you go. Now, do you have any hot glue tips? I know that I'm legendary for both getting like those little strings and for burning myself. So I have a hot glue tip right here. <laughs> you can put this on your finger, you know, when you're working. Um, you can also put a dot of Vaseline at the end of your hot glue gun. At the and, end of your glue gun. And that'll prevent those long stringy things. Really? Yeah. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to go and try that. You can, when you're also done, just hit your whole project with a heat gun and that makes the whole little stringy things Disappear. evaporate. Cool. So I have one more row to go here. Okay. Now, is there anything special when you apply that top row that you need to think about? I cut it a little bit shorter. Okay. And I did that in advance, but you don't have to, right? You could have just trimmed the book when you're done. And I'll probably trim this even more because I think I'm going to put a band across the top. I haven't really decided yet what my exact look. So when you're thinking about your project, you don't actually plan it from start to finish. You sort of work in the moment. You know, some projects I do because I'm fussy like a woodworking project, but this, I mean, how could you screw up? Really? It's true. I mean, think it's about true. it. So I need a band to go around the book. Oh my gosh, I thought that was metal until it flopped in your hand. Yeah. I'm having a mind blown moment. It how about totally the looks like metal. That's amazing. How did you do the rivets? Well, you could punch holes and do brads. Look at this trick. It's jump rings. <gasps> and you just paint it over them? No, you start with your jump rings. And you put a glop. Is glop a right word? This is Gloppy. where that glop is a correct word. That thing, that little finger thing, comes in handy. You just put a thing of glue inside the ring. I was gonna say you need like a skewer or something to hold that in place while you're gluing. There you and go. And it makes little mounds that are perfect circles. And you can paint over both the metal and the hot glue. One fell swoop. That is super cool. So those are our rivets. Let's just see what that looks like in silver. 
Now, I would normally do this black first because remember, it's kind of translucent. But look at that. That is super cool. So we're down to the last steps. Yes. We're gonna just wrap this around the book. Make sure we see where it falls. Now this flap needs something to hold it, right? So all we need to do, I got the book upside down. All we wanna do here is somehow attach that flap. So you can so just the glue it always, or something like that. But then you couldn't take it in and out. If you take this strip and put it here and go over the edges like that, Ah. Now that will hold. That so you would just strap. glue that in place. The same thing with this, because it's so flexible, I can start it here and hot glue it and wrap it all the way around. And if I look at your finished example here, I actually thought that this was leather running all the way down here. This is blowing my mind a little bit, Joe. This was such a cool project. Thank you. Thank you so much and bring more costumes next time. <laughs>